Hey guys, I'm Janet on occasion, and today we are looking at the first legendary Lord of Cathay in detail. You know, we've seen them, we've heard about them, but uh, we haven't heard a lot about them, and now we're going to hear a bit more about one of them. So, who is Miao Yin the Storm Dragon? I mean, for starters, awesome name, you know, can't really go wrong with that. I don't know if it's more or less impressive that it's literal, because she is a dragon. But uh, the Storm Dragon is a hell of a title, right? I dig it. So, uh, Ben Barrett, once again, thank you for, for treating us. Uh, Grand Cathay is coming to Total War Warhammer 3, and with it comes the Mighty Dragons, rulers of the Empire, and powerful shape-shifting warriors. As new additions to Warhammer, we get the particular joy of introducing them for the first time. To help with that, I've enlisted Andy Hull, our lead writer for Warhammer Projects and overall fanatic of everything Warhammer. He helped at every stage to implement Grand Cathay into Total War Warhammer 3. So, um, I mentioned him actually in a previous uh, blog post that we, we talked about, um, in the one saying, uh, or was it in the, in the FAQ, but it was like, did you just make this up? And they were like, well, no, we work with Games Workshop. I mentioned Andy Hall, because uh, he's the head writer for uh, the Total War Warhammer series, and he has worked for Games Workshop in the past. He's written a bunch of, um, uh, 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 you know, rule books and stuff. So, yeah, he's he's got pedigree. He's got pedigree. He's part of the sort of the Games Workshop family, as it were. So, um, you know, he's a good one to be writing for it. So, TW.com, that's right, the website can speak true. Uh, thanks for joining us, Andy. Since we haven't spoken about Grand Cathay before, can you give us a short intro on who they are, what's special about them, and the work you did to bring them to life? Andy Hull. When... Oh, what is it? Exits, exits, left, followed by bear, pursued by bear? I assume there should be stage directions with this. Can we have that? Can we have that in the next blog? Ben Barrett, if you're watching, that'd be great. I'd love to see stage directions. Uh, when talking with my ex-colleagues at Games Workshop, we wanted Cathay to feel that it was just as rich and iterated upon as any Warhammer race, even if the players hadn't been able to see this until now. The goal was to make them feel like a fully-fledged 8th edition race right out of the gate, with their own roster, quirks, and spectacle. That is a very important thing. It's very difficult to suddenly go, here's a new faction, and for it to feel like it has the same, uh, I mean, I hate to reuse the word pedigree again, but it needs that, right? It has to feel like it's a part of a world that has had 30 years in the oven, right? It's very difficult to go, oh, this has also had 30 years in the oven. Honest. It's a tough thing. So, um, yeah, I can understand the challenge there. The team at Games Workshop tapped into the design ethos of Warhammer Fantasy Battle, which has been to take archetypes, both historical and mythic, then twist and push them to extremes. This has given us a deep roster to play with, with plenty of potential areas for expansion. But from a purely player perspective, whether it's in Total War or on the tabletop, I think the real innovation is the dragons that they can transform into both draconic and human aspects, and each form gives players myriad tactical options in battle. That is exciting. And that is exciting. It makes me think that the, um, what was it, uh, uh, Zarkan and, uh, and Malice Darkblade, that thing, where they can, you know, transform between themselves. It makes me think that that was practice for, for this sort of thing. I hope it, it feels a bit more like a transformation, rather than just, like, disappeared, you know, random special effects and there's a new character there. Like, I'd love to see some transitionary um, animation or something rather than just it disguised with a puff of smoke or something. So um, it's going to be challenging because dragons are quite a lot bigger than people and Zarkand form of Malice was about the same size as Malice. So there wasn't really, yeah, not the same challenge, but uh, yeah, maybe testing the technology there somewhat. So that's cool. So, um, but, uh, nope, we've read that already. Next question, hooray. Uh, on to Miao Yin, the Storm Dragon. Who is she? Um, she is the eldest daughter of the Celestial Dragon Emperor and holds many titles. Master of the Storm Winds, Castellan of the Great Bastion, Ruler of the Northern Provinces, Matriarch of Nangao. She is as powerful as those honours suggest, and everything you expect, and more from a Warhammer Legendary Lord. As cool a tactician and powerful a magic user as any High Elf, but able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a greater demon in dragon form. Very cool. It does make me wonder if um, it transitions from like a purely sort of melee-focused um, dragon to like a spellcaster hero. It could be could be a really interesting dynamic there. Um, so you know you don't get the strengths of both at the same time, but it gives you a lot of flexibility, which uh, you know could be really interesting in a battle. I've got to say because usually you know if you're playing as Balthazar Gelt or something, he gets attacked by a bunch of guys. He's dead. 
<laughs> simply, simply put, he's he's gonna get torn to bits if he gets caught out by a bunch of things. But if he could suddenly go, you know what, I'm a dragon now, then suddenly you're fighting a dragon, which I think we can all assume is gonna be a bit more of a challenge um, than some like a doddery old man. Except, uh, well, Miao Yin isn't a doddery old man, but you know what I mean. Um, but what I find really engaging, uh, and she is my favorite legendary lord, by the way, is her personality. Also, there she is. We can't really see her personality, so this doesn't really um, uh, um, add to that point. But you know, she looks cool. Um, I love the I love the garb. I love the little dragon insignia going on. Also, she has one dragon claw just as a dragon claw, which is really cool. I really do like that as a as a sort of a motif. You know, just so you know who you're dealing with. It's kind of cool. So um, yeah, Miao Yin, the Storm Dragon. What makes a character so compelling? As a writer, you look for ways to connect and emphasize with your characters. It's not always easy to do when they're Warhammer villains such as Cetra or Archeon, but even then we must understand their drives. Powerful, aloof, celestial dragon beings could also easily fall into the same category, but the familiar angle gives us a way in. She is the eldest daughter trying to prove her worth to her father against jealous siblings. She's Suko. She's Zuko, from Avatar Last Airbender. That's who she is. <laughs> I love that. So she's going to be tasked with uh, going out and uh, killing the Avatar. We all know that. She's got to hunt down the Avatar with her uncle. Oh, if only. We'll see. We'll see. You never know. We might be onto something. Uh, so she's the eldest daughter trying to prove her worth um, uh, to her father against jealous siblings. That's a very human scenario and one we can leverage and understand, especially for me as a father with a very determined older daughter. Uh, that's nice. That's cute. So one of the titles you gave above stands out. Matriarch of Nengao. Can you elaborate? Uh, yes. Oh, good. Otherwise, that'd be a bit of a wasted question. Uh, she rules the City of Smoke. Again, cool title. These guys have good honorifics for their... For their uh for their landmarks and people. I like it. Although the Lords of Nangao are perhaps not as uh, deferent to the dragon as the ruling classes in other cities, this is perhaps the city, um, this is because the home it, this is because the city is home to countless forges and workshops that furnish the armies of the empire with weapons and provide countless war machines for the defense of the great bastion. So uh, it makes me think of Nuln in the empire, you know, all those great forges. So the Lords are powerful granted more independence than most and have occasionally even dared to challenge the Storm Dragon, although she has swiftly reminded them of their true station. So this I do find interesting because uh, the idea of sort of this sort of benevolent, you know, benevolent uh, rulership, they still rule with an iron fist, you know, the idea of this uh, lovely benevolent uh, dragon emperor and his wife. Um, it, it's so far all we've read seems to be that they protect everyone. Yeah, but it does seem like they protect their own interests too. Uh, there is, you know, something to be said for your, you know, the city that houses all of your forges that create all the defenses for your kingdom, deciding to go off on its own way. You know, you can't have something like that secede, obviously. But um, you know, there's there's more to explore here. I feel so. Let's uh, let's hope they do. Let's hope they do. Uh, where are we? Where are we now? So, the lords are powerful, ground more dependence, blah, 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 blah. So, how does she compare to her brother in arms and blood, Zhao Min, our other legendary lord? Her vaulted position as a commander of the Great Bastion means she is, perhaps correctly, perceived as the favourite by the other dragons. The Storm Dragon doesn't help matters by lording her position over her siblings. When they meet, she often stands apart. Zhao Min, her younger brother, is far more gregarious character and gets especially offended by Yin's aloofness. Interesting. So the younger brother, so far from what we've seen, has been described as the more uh, sort of sinister one, the one that's a bit more uh, scary, that people are thinking like, oh, you know, close to the... Uh, close to the, uh, what do they call the warp wasteland or whatever the hell, you know, with the Great Moor. Um, so, you know, and his, his sort of, uh, his penchant for magic sort of means he's more connected to chaos and he's a bit, you know, people are a bit suspicious of that. Um, it makes him sound like the more sort of um, uh, serious and, and, and severe of the, of the siblings. But here, it actually makes it seem that he's actually a good dude, but everyone just thinks he's evil because he's the, he's the big black dragon and has magic, which people find suspicious. Um, so I think that's cool. I think that's a really interesting um, dynamic where the, the sort of, the most benevolent one seems to be the most uh, uh, 
authoritarian. So this could be really cool. I really can't wait to see how, how this plays out, how people's opinions of these characters um, sort of play against their actual personalities. Um, it's very difficult to show those kind of dynamics in like gameplay, but you never know. It could be interesting. There might be some interesting um, mechanics revolving around like public order and and things like that. Um, so I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they how they sort of express that in game. I mean, it might just be quest battle dialogue and things, but you never know. There could be some interesting stuff here. So thanks, Andy. Yeah, thanks, Andy. Uh, that's Miao Yin, the Storm Dragon. Next week, we'll also introduce you uh, to her brother, Xiao Min, the Iron Dragon. Again, great, great name, Iron Dragon. To give you a thorough overview of who's available to align with in the Eastern Empire. Very, very cool. So I'm very excited. Uh, she seems like a really cool character. And um, uh, yeah, more sort of uh, leaning towards the sort of more despotic cliche of, you know, dragons lording over people, which I think is really cool. I think it's really fun. Uh, because that's the thing, it's Warhammer. No one should be sort of, um, no one should just be good. And then you're done, right? They're, they're all flawed. And if you're in a position of power in Warhammer, you probably, you probably strove for it, you know? Um, in fact, the only the only case I can think uh, that goes against that is Karl Franz wasn't keen to be emperor. Um, it was actually uh, I think it was actually from a short story that that Andy Hall wrote actually as part of uh, the marketing material for Total Warhammer. I think he did a, a revision of the the backstory. I think it was him. It might not be. So don't quote me on that. But there was a, a tale of basically Karl Franz before the election to decide who the next emperor was. He went to uh, Bretonia. He was he was called to Bretonia just to, just over the border, um, past Helmgard, I think. And uh, Leonke was there waiting for him and said, "Yeah, you've got to be emperor, mate, because I've seen things." Um, he had an idea that the end times was coming and that Karl Franz needed to be emperor, which I think is really cool. So that's uh, you know the idea of uh, Karl Franz being pure of heart. And you know, being the embodiment of Sigma and all the rest of it, I think that's a very cool um, thing because that makes him genuinely unique. Uh, most people in Warhammer are bad. They're bad people. Even if they mean well, they're bad people. It's it's not a good universe. You know, it's not a nice place to be. So the idea that we have someone who you know seems to be like oh benevolent dragon lords protecting the kingdom, they they protect it. Um, despite what anyone necessarily wants by the looks of it, which I love. I think that's the the coolest sort of um, empire. Because it's an empire at the end of the day. You know, imperialism isn't something that's uh, done necessarily democratically, is it? So, you know. So, uh, yeah, this is really cool. I can't wait. I can't wait to see how this all plays out mechanically um, in-game. Because that's something that Total War needs, I think. Total War Warhammer in particular. It needs more injections of, like the story of each character and I really hope they really drive that home they've done it with recent DLC in a big way but hopefully Warhammer 3 will will continue that trend so I'm very excited and I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you uh, you took something away and uh, it's got you it's got you thinking about what this all means I'd love to hear your theories um, for any gameplay mechanics you think this might involve and uh, yeah I can't wait to read them all and see if you guys have, have sort of picked up on anything that I might have missed so it sounds good uh, also uh, if you want to pre-order Total War Warhammer 3, you can go to my Nexus store on uh, nexus.gg slash Janet, and I get a cut of it. It costs the same as it does on Steam, uh, in most regions anyway. It seems that in the Nordics, you actually get a discount if you're if you're from uh, from the Nordic countries. You seem to get it a, a few quid cheaper, so, you know, go nuts. So, uh, yeah, guys, if you enjoyed this, come out and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Have a good one.